Hello and welcome everyone, Ragnarok here with episode 6 slash chapter 6 of our Drizzt Doer Dan Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign. Things going pretty smooth so far campaign wise. We've uh, consolidated two territories over here in uh, Grand Cathay on the edge. Uh, we can actually recruit another Black Ark which we'll do here soon as soon as we get some more funds but I want to complete this uh, second army first because I want to get those artillery pieces into action. So uh, we're going to do that today and we're going to declare war on the Skaven. It's the plan for the uh, the campaign. So that's uh, what we're working towards. And yeah, like I said, we'll get that uh, we'll get that next black arc because I believe we, we, we are able to recruit another one, which is kind of weird because I think it's you can recruit one for Every major settlement? How does this work with old, uh, uh, with the blessed dread here? Uh, Menace of Manolathan. Every owned major port will allow the recruitment of a black arc. Okay. Start with one, and we have two major settlements. We could technically only be able to have three, right? But apparently. We can recruit this, so I don't know. Um, maybe, maybe he has something else in his skill tree that gives him an additional one. The Kraken Lord. Eh, I'm not entirely sure, but I guess I shouldn't really complain about it. Anyway, we will get that fourth black arc here shortly. But uh, the plan right now, declare war on the Skaven and, and trade all this territory to the Cathayans. And then we're going to uh, hop, skip, and jump off to the uh, the Nagaron. So probably Nagaron is still a little ways away. But um, yeah, and then army-wise, uh, we'll probably put a couple of bolt throwers in Lokir's army as well. Maybe. Or maybe not. I don't know. Do we need them in his army? Question. It. Uh, they are kind of handy for the old sieges. But if we have a, if we keep him, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how she goes. How I feel. Anyway, without further ado, you guys are here for the book, chapter six, coming up. Here we go. Legend of Drizzt, Book 1, Homeland, R.A. Salvatore. Chapter 6, Two Hands. Drizzt promptly answered the call to his matron mother's side. Not needing the whip Brizza used to hurry him along, how often he had felt the sting of that dreaded weapon. Drizzt held no thoughts of revenge against his vicious oldest sister. With all of the conditioning he had received, he feared the consequences of striking her, or any female, Far too much to entertain such notions. Do you know what day? Do you know what this day marks? Malice asked him as he arrived at the side of her great throne in the chapel's darkened anteroom. No, matron mother, Drizzt answered, unconsciously keeping his gaze on his toes. A resigned sigh rose in his throat as he noticed the unending view of his own feet. There had to be more to life than blank stone and ten wiggling toes, he thought. He slipped one foot out of his low boot and began doodling on the stone floor. Body heat left discernible tracings in the infrared spectrum, and Drizzt was, quickly, uh, was quick and agile enough to complete the simple drawings before the initial lines had cooled. Sixteen years, Matron Malice said to him. You have breathed the air of Menzo Baranzan, for 16 years, an important period of your life has passed. Drizzt did not react, did not see any importance or significance to the declaration. His life was an unending and unchanging routine. One day, 16 years, what difference did it make? If his mother considered important the thing he had been put through since his earliest recollections, Drizzt shuddered to think of what the next decades might hold. He had nearly completed his picture of round-shouldered crow, Drizzt, 
being bitten on the behind by an, or an enormous viper. Look at me, Matris Ma Matron Malice commanded. Drizzt felt at a loss. His natural tendency once had been to look upon a person with whom he was talking, but Drizzt had wasted no time in beating that instinct out of him. The place of a page prince was servitude, and the only eyes a page prince's were worthy of meeting were those of the creatures that scurried across the stone floor, except the eyes of a spider, of course. Drizzt had to avert his gaze whenever one of the eight-legged things crawled yes. into his vision. Spiders were too good for the likes of a page prince. Look at me, Malice said again, her tone hinting at volatile impatience. Grizza had witn witnessed the explosions before, a wrath so incredibly vile that it swept aside anything and everything in its path. Even Frizza, so pompous and cruel, ran for Heine when the matron mother grew angry. Grizzit forced his gaze up tentatively, scanning his mother's black robes, using the familiar spider pattern along the garment's black and sides to judge the angle of his gaze. He fully expected as every inch passed, a smack on his head or a lashing on his back. Rizza was behind it, always with her snake-headed whip, near her anxious hand. Then he saw her, the mighty matron Malice Duradan, her heat-sensing eyes flashing red and her face cool, not flushed with angry heat. Drizzt kept tense, still expecting a punishing blow. Your tenure as page princes ended, Malice explained. You are a second boy of House Duradan now, and are accorded all the... Drizzt's gaze unconsciously slipped back to the floor. Look at me! His mother screamed in sudden rage. Terrified, Drizzt snapped his gaze back to her face, which now was glowing a hot red. On the edge of his vision, he saw the wavering heat of Malice's swinging hand though he was not foolish enough to try to dodge the blow. He was on the floor then, the side of his face bruised. Even in the fall, though, Grizzit was alert and wise enough to keep his gaze locked on to that of Matron Malice. No more a servant, the Matron Mother roared. Continue acting like one would bring di disgrace to our family. She grabbed Grizzit by the throat and dragged him roughly to his feet. If you dishonor House Dewar Dan, she promised. Her face an inch from his. I will put needles into your purple eyes. Grizzit didn't blink. In the six years since Farina had relinquished care of him, putting him into general servitude to all the family, he had come to know Matron Malice well enough to understand all of the subtle connotations of her threats. She was his mother, or whatever that was worth, but Grizzit did not doubt that she would enjoy sticking needles in his eyes. This one is different, Angelina said, in more than the shade of his eyes. In what way, then? Zach Nafine asked, trying to keep his curiosity at a professional level. Zach had always liked Farina better than the others, but she recently had been ordained a high priestess, and had since become too eager for her own good. Farina slowed the pace of her gait. The door to the chapel's antechamber was in sight now. It's hard to say, she admitted. Drizzt is an intelligent, is as intelligent as any male child I have ever known, who could levitate by the age of five. Yet, after he became the page prince, it took weeks of punishment to teach him the duty of keeping his gaze to the floor, as if such a simple act ran unnaturally counter to his constitution. Zach Nafine paused and let Verena move ahead of him. Unnatural, he whispered under his breath. Considering the implications of Verena's observations, Usual, unusual, perhaps, for a drill, but exactly what Zactafine would expect and hope for from the child of his own. He moved behind Verena into the lightless anteroom. Malice, as always, sat in her throne at the head of the spider idol, but all the other chairs in the room had been moved to the walls, even though the entire family was present. This was to be a formal meeting, Zack realized, only the matron mother was accorded the comfort of a seat. Matron Malice, Verena began in her most reverent voice, I present to you Zach the Fiend, as you requested. Zach moved up beside Verena and exchanged nods with Malice, but he was more intent on the youngest doer Dan, standing naked to the waist at the matron mother's side. Malice held up one hand to silence the others, then motioned for Brizza, pulling a house coffee 
continue. An expression of elation brightened Drizzt's childish face as Brizza, chanting through the appropriate incantations, placed the magical cloak black and shot with streaks of purple and red over his shoulders. Greetings, Zaknavine Duardan, Drizzt said heartily, drawing stunned looks from all in the room. Matron Malice had not granted him priv privilege to speak. He hadn't even asked her permission. I am Drizzt, second boy of House Duardan. No more the page prince. I can look at you now. I mean at your eyes, and not your boots. Mother told me so. Drizzt's smile disappeared when he looked up at the burning scowl of <laughs> Matron Malice. Marina stood as if turned to stone, her jaw hanging open and her eyes wide in disbelief. Zack, too, was amazed, but in a different manner. Brought a hand up to pinch his lips together to prevent them from spreading into a smile that would have inevitably erupted into belly-shaking laughter. Zack couldn't remember the last time he had seen the Major Mother's face so very bright. Brizza, in her customary position behind Malice, fumbled with her whip, too confounded by her younger brother's actions to even know what in the nine hells she should do. That was a first, Zack knew, for Malice's eldest daughter rarely hesitated when punishment was in order. At the matron's side, but now prudently a step further away, Brizzit quieted and stood perfectly still, biting down on his bottom lip. Zack could see, though, that the smile remained of young Dro's eyes. Drizzt's informality and disrespect of station had been more than an unconscious slip of the tongue and more than the innocence of an experience. The whipmaster took a long step forward to deflect the matron mother's attention from Drizzt. Second boy, he asked, sounding impressed, both for the sake of Drizzt's swelling pride and to pla placate and distract malice. And it is time for you to train. Malice let her anger slip away. A rare event. Only the basics at only the basics at your hand, Zaknafine. If Drizzt is to replace Nalfine, his place at the Academy will be in Sorcerer. Thus the bulk of his preparation will fall upon Risen, and his knowledge, limited limited though it may be, of the magical arts. Are you certain that wizardry is his lot, matron? Zack was quick to ask. He appears intelligent, Malice replied. She sh shot an angry glare at Trivet, at least some of the time. Marina reported great progress with his command of the innate powers. Our house needs a new wizard. Malice snarled reflexively, reminded of Matron Benair's pride in her wizard son, the Archmage of the city. It had been sixteen years since Malice's meeting with the first Matron Mother of Menzer Baran's End, but she had never forgotten even the tiny, tiniest detail of that encounter. Sorcerer seems the natural course. Zack took a clap. Uh, Zack took a flat coin from his neck purse, flipped it into a spin, and snatched it out of the air. Might we see? He asked. As you will, Malice agreed. Not surprised at Zack's desire to prove her wrong, Zack placed little value in wizardry, preferring the hilt of a blade to the crystal rod component of a lightning bolt. Zack moved to stand before Drizzt and handed him the coin. Flip it. Drizzt shoved, shrugged, wondering what this vague conversation between his mother and the weapon master was all about. Until now, he had heard nothing of any future progression being planned for him or of his place of this place called Sorcerer. With a consenting shrug of his shoulders, he slid the coin onto his curled index finger and snapped it into the air with his thumb, easily catching it. He then held it back out to Zack and gave the weapon master a confused look, as if to ask what was so important about such an easy task. Instead of taking the coin, the weapon master pulled another from his neck purse. Try both hands, he said to Drizzt, hanging it to him. Drizzt shrugged, ag shrugged again, and in one easy motion, put the coins up and caught them. Zack turned an eye on Matron Malice. Any drow could have performed that feat, but the ease with which this one executed the catch was a pleasure to observe. Keeping a sly eye on the matron, Zack produced two more coins. Zack two on each other and send all four up together, he instructed Drizzt. Four coins went up, four coins were caught. The only parts of Drizzt's body that had even, even flinched were his arms. Two hands, Zack said to Malice. This one is a fighter. 
who belongs in Nili Magrit. I've seen wizards perform such feats, Malice retorted, not pleased by the look of satisfaction on the troublesome weapon master's face. Zack had Zack once had been Malice's proclaimed husband, and quite often sensed that distant time she took him as his lover as her lover. His skills and agility were not confined to the use of weapons. But along with the pleasures that Zaknafin gave to Malice, sensual skills that had prompted Malice to spare Zack's life on more than a dozen occasions came a multiple of headaches. He was the finest weapon master in Menzo Baranza, another fact that Malice could not ignore. But his disdain, even contempt, for the Spider Queen had often landed House Durdan into trouble. Zack handed two more coins to Drizzt, now enjoying the game. Drizzt put them into motion, six went up, six came down. The correct three landing in each hand. Two hands, Zack said more emphatically. Matron Malice motioned for him to continue, unable to deny the grace of her youngest son's display. Could you do it again? Zack asked Drizzt, with each hand working independently. Drizzt soon had the coins stacked atop his index fingers, ready to flip. Zack stopped him there and pulled out four more coins, building each of the piles five high. Zack paused a moment to study the concentration of the young drill, and also to keep his hands over the coins to ensure that they were brightened enough by the warmth of his body heat for Drizzt to properly see them in their flight. Catch them all, second boy, he said in all seriousness. Catch them all, or you will land in sorcery, the school of magic. That is not where you belong. Drizzt still had only a vague idea of what Drizzt was talking about, but he could tell from the Weapon Master's intensity that it must be important. He took a deep breath to steady himself, then snapped the coins up, he sorted their glow quickly, discerning each individual item. First two fell easily into his hands, Drizzt saw the scattering pattern of the rest did not drop them so readily in line. Drizzt exploded into action, spinning a complete circle, his hands in an indes undecipherable blur of motion. Then he straightened suddenly and stood before Zack. His hands were in fists at his sides, and a grim look lay on his face. Zack and Matron Malice exchanged glances, neither quite sure of what had happened. Drizzt, Drizzt held his fists out, to Zack and slowly opened them, a confident smile widening across his childish face. Five coins in each hand. Zack blew a silent whistle. It had taken him, the weapon master of house, a dozen tries to complete that maneuver with ten coins. He walked over to Matron Malice. Two hands, he said a third time. He's a fighter, and I am out of coins. How many could he do? Malice breathed, obviously impressed in spite of herself. How many could we stop? Zack Nathan shot back with a triumphant smile. Matron Malice chuckled out loud and shook her head. She had wanted Drizzt to replace Nalfin as the house wizard, but her stubborn weapon master had always deflected her course. Very well, Zack Nathan, she said, admitting her defeat. The second boy is a fighter. Zack nodded and started back to Drizzt. Perhaps one day soon to be the weapon master of House Durdan. Matron Malice added to Zack's back. Her sarcasm stopped Zack short, and he eyed her over his shoulder. With this one, Matron Malice continued wryly, wrenching back the upper hand with her usual lack of shame. Could we expect anything less? Risen, the present patron of the family, shifted uncomfortably. He knew, and so did everyone, even the slaves of House Durdan, that Drizzt was not his child. Three rooms. Drizzt asked when he and Zack entered the large training hall at the southernmost end of the Duerdan complex. Balls of multicolored magical light had been spaced along the length of the high ceiling stone room, basking the entire entirety in a com comfortably dim glow. The hall had only three doors, one to the east, which led to an outer chamber that opened onto the balcony of the house, one directly across from Drizzt on the south wall, leading into the last room in the house, and one from the main hallway they had just passed through. Drizzt knew from many locks Zack was now fastening behind them that he wouldn't often be going back that way. One room, Zack directed, 
two more doors. Zip, zip. Looking out across the room. With no locks. Ah, Zack corrected. The locks are made of common sense. Rizit was beginning to get the picture. That door, Zack continued, pointing to the south, opens, in, opens into my private chambers. You do, not, you do not ever want me to find you in there. The other one leads to the tactics room, reserved for times of war. When, if, you ever prove yourself to my satisfaction, I might invite you to join me there. That day is years away, so consider the signal magnificent hall. He swept his arm out in a wide arc. Your home. Frizzit looked around, not overly thrilled. He had dared to hope that he had left this kind of treatment behind him with his page prince days. This setup, though, brought him back even to before his six years of servitude in the house. Back to that decade when he had been locked away in the family chapel of Karina. This room wasn't even as large as the chapel and was too tight for the likings of the spirited young girl. His next question came out as a growl. Where do I sleep? Your home, Zack Zach answered matter-of-factly. Where do I take meals? Your home. Drizzit's eyes narrowed to slits and his face flushed in glowing heat. Where do I... He began stubbornly, determined to foil the Weapon Master's logic. Your home. Zack replied in the same measured and weighted timber before Drizzit could finish the thought. Drizzit planted his feet firmly and crossed his arms over his chest. Sounds messy, he growled. It had better not be, Zack growled back. Then what is the purpose, Drizzit began. You pull me away from my mother. You will address her as Matron Malice, Zack warned. You will always address her as Matron Malice. From my mother... Ne Zack's next interruption came not with words, but with the sting of a curled fist. Rizzit awoke about 20 minutes later. First lesson, Zack explained, casually leaning against the wall a few feet away. For your own good, you will always address her as Matron Malice. Rizzit rolled to his side and tried to prop himself up on his elbow, but found his head reeling as soon as it left the black rugged floor. Zack grabbed him and hoisted him up. Not as easy as catching coins, the weapon master remarked. What? Carrying a blow. What blow? Just agree, you stubborn child. Second boy, Drizzt corrected, his voice again a growl and his arms defiantly back over his chest. Zack's fist curled at his side. Not too subtle point that Drizzt did not miss. You need another nap, the western weapon master and his cargo. Second boys can be children, Rizit wisely conceded. Zack shook his head in disbelief. This was going to be interesting. You may find your time here enjoyable, he said, leading Drizzit over to a long, thick, and carefully, though most of the colors were somber, decorated current curtain. But only if you can learn some control over that wagging tongue of yours. A sharp tug sent the curtain floating down, revealing the most magnificent magnificent weapons rack, the young drow, and many older drow as well, had ever seen pull arms of many sorts, swords, axes, hammers, and every other kind of weapon Drizzt could imagine. A whole bunch he'd never imagined sat in an elaborate array. Examine them, Zack told him. Take your time and your pleasure. Learn which ones sit best in your hands. Follow the most obedient, follow most obediently the commands of your will. By the time we have finished, you will know every one of them as a trusted companion. Wide-eyed, Drizzt wandered along the rock, viewing the whole place and the potential of the whole experience in a completely different light. For his entire young life, 16 years, his greatest enemy had been avoided. Now, it appeared, Drizzt had found weapons to fight that enemy. Zack headed for the door to his private chamber thinking it better that Drizzt be alone in these first awkward moments of handling the weapons. Weapon Master stopped, though. When he reached his door and looked back at the young door door, Drizzt swung a long and heavy halberd, pull on more than twice his height, in a slow arc. For all of Drizzt's attempts to keep the weapon under control, its momentum spun his tiny frame right to the ground. Zack heard himself chuckle, but his laughter only reminded him the grim reality of his duty. 
from the train Drizzik as he had trained a thousand young Dark Elves before him, to be a warrior, preparing him for the trials of the Academy and life in dangerous Menzo Baranza, who trained Drizzik to be a killer. How, against this one's nature, that mantle seemed, thought Zack. Smiles came too easily to Drizzik. The thought of him running a sword through the heart of another living being revolted Zack the Fiend. That was the way of the drow, though. A way that Zack had been unable to resist for all of his four centuries of life. Pulling a stare from the spectacle of Drizzik at play, Zack moved into his chamber and shut the door. Are they all like that? He asked into his early em empty room, Do all drove children possess such an innocent, such simple, untainted smiles that cannot survive the ugliness of our world? Zack started for the small desk to the side of the room, leaning to lift the darkening shade off the continually gro glowing ceramic globe that served as the chamber's light source. Changed his mind as that image of Drizzit delighted the we with the weapon masters refused to diminish, and he headed instead for the large bed across from the door. Where are you, you unique, Drizzit Duerdan, continued, as he fell onto the cushioned bed. And if you are so different, what then is the cause? The blood, my blood, that courses through your veins? Or the years you spent with your wean mother? Zack threw an arm across his eyes and considered the many questions. Drizzit was different from the norm, he decided at length, but he didn't know whether he should thank Farina or himself. After a while, sleep took him, but it brought the Weapon Master a little comfort. A familiar dream visited him, and visited him a vivid memory that would never fade. Zack and the Fiend heard again the screams of the children of House Devere as the Duerdan soldiers, soldiers he himself trained, slashed at them. This one is different, Zack cried, leaping from his bed. He wiped the cold sweat from his face. This one is different. Mad, leave that. Ooh, sorry guys, I, uh, trying to pay attention to the, uh, to the story, but, uh, the siege is <laughs> not going exactly according to plan. Not my smoothest siege. Um, of all time by any stretch. Uh, a little bit annoyed that I, I don't know why we couldn't target the, uh, um, whatchamacallit there. The, the tower, uh, kind of weird. Snickich, oh man, Snickich is, uh, level 15 already, eh? Look at that. Ah, oh, that did not work out as well as I had hoped. Um, yeah, Snickich here has wounded Drizzit Duerdan. So, uh, that's my bad. I, um, I was gonna pull him, uh, I meant to pull him back, uh, with the two of them here. And just kind of lost track of him while I was trying to, struggling to get these, uh, these boys in here. But we're starting to... We got some night runners there. You guys can take them out. Let's uh, let's bring you guys up here as well and see if we can go for some more of these uh, victory points. Can you guys get up there? It's gonna move. Get they're moving. But yeah, we'll just uh, fight through the siege here. Oh my bad. I get the uh, webcam down. Fight through the siege here and then hopefully. Uh, Getting shot at by here. Let's get in behind. Let's try this fight. What are we fighting? Thunder oh, with spears. Snickich is uh, causing quite the problems here. Oh, oh, I want you to shoot at him. Trouble is, um, he's such a small target. Once he gets caught in with these uh, units and whatnot, it's hard to hard to get after him. Let's see if we can get some of these guys on the wall here. Down here. We're looking up here. Alright, good, good, good. You guys come around here. See, the thing is, sometimes, like, you, you make your... You place your units, and you think 
Uh, everything is fine. Ah, oh, shit. Get out of there. Don't guard mode. Go, 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 go. Get out of there. Send somebody else in there. And oh, I don't know what the fuck happened here. Go, 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 go. Um. Yeah, like in, in the sieges, sometimes what happens is you place your units. And it doesn't, um, for whatever reason, like, you place them too close to the wall or whatever, it, um, it, the, the command doesn't go through, and, like, you may or may not notice it happening or whatever, so it can be, uh, somewhat problematic. You're, uh, taking some heavy casualties, but that's, I, I'm not too, not too worried about that. Should be able to replenish relatively quickly. And we are going to get rid of Snickich's army here. But, uh, yeah, a cleaner victory would have been nice. He's shaken, so we're getting, we're getting there. But, yeah, quite a few uh, <laughs> casualties. But, yeah, I, I kind of rushed the attack a little bit more than I would have. Um, considering these uh, towers... We're, um, we couldn't, we couldn't target the tower for some reason. Let's get in there. Yeah, let's just hope, uh, we get a fair bit of replenishment here after this, uh, little shitstorm. I think we should be pretty close. The army losses. I hope so, anyway. Alright, let's uh, come in this way with you guys. You guys keep chasing them off. And somebody's gotta get after it. You need to come down this way because he's gonna, he's gonna rally if we're not careful here. Yeah. Sieges are a bit of a uh, bit of a nuisance. Yeah, he's rallied, unfortunately. I knew that was gonna happen. All right, yeah, you guys keep chasing them down. And maybe the rest of you, maybe we'll come around this way. Gotta <laughs> scared to check the unit cards, the uh, casualties. Yeah, some pretty pretty badly damaged units over there. But, uh, anyway, what are you going to do? What can you do? Shit happens. You haven't done a siege in Warhammer for a little while. And these, these maps are like a bloody freaking labyrinth. Just navigating them becomes a little bit of, uh, a little bit of a pain. But I am liking the Corsairs. Like, uh... Get some use out of them. We got to see what I mean. Like uh, I'm trying to attack this thing, but the freaking controls just do not want to co cooperate. Right, I guess you guys are. Do you guys come this way over here to this? Try and capture some of these. Oh, I guess there must be something. Is there something blocking us to come over there? Uh, oh my god! Serious? Yeah, I don't know. No. Down to there. So I'll come in here and get this. Alright, he's running off. How are we doing over here? Not have some guys moving this way, we do. Oh, apparently we got a fight. Okay, you guys are all going into combat. Just fighting rats, come on. Surely you guys can beat rats and melee. Yeah, Loke here is going to be injured for a couple of turns, which is uh, kind of crap. But, you know, he'll be back. Even the greatest heroes go down every once in a while. God 
damn, see what I mean? Like, it's like, try and click on something, and it's you, you're just like fighting the game, fighting against the game to do what you want to do sometimes. Is like, I, you know, I, I appreciate the intricacy of the settlements and stuff, but just freaking make sure that the game is working properly, you know, make sure that you can do the clicks that you want to do and whatever. Uh oh, did our, uh, oh no, I think our, uh, oh fuck, did I get our mage killed? I think I got the mage killed. Oh, Unless she ran. Let's hope she ran off the field. Because she won't, um... That was, uh, Catabri. Not to spoil anything, but she becomes... A friend... A very close friend of Drizzt's as the, uh, the books go on. But, uh... Yeah. Well. It was, uh... A bit of a disaster here, this siege. This little siege. Gotta get away with an auto resolve as well. I'm thinking, ah, no. And do a nice clean siege. Easy game, easy life. And, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> not how she went. As the disadvantage of playing with the unit cards down. But, it is what it is. I, uh, prefer being able to see more of the screen too um, to having them up what else get in there oh, another capture point captured these towers are Kicking her ass as well. Another thing. Got uh, going on here. Yeah, that's fine. Surely, surely we're gonna trigger the army loss here soon. I think these are the only units that are left back here. The other thing is, too, I kind of overestimated the strength of Lokir fighting those units at the front. Lokir, like uh, Lokir in our. Um, or other heroes. Like, how do you even get to this fucking area here? Things down. Alright. I mean, you can't really blame the pathfinding for not, like, finding the, the right way because it's so complex. I think this is it. I think this is the uh, arm loss about to trigger. Please, please let this bloodbath <laughs> end. Woo. All right, a little bit of a, a little bit of a janky fight there. Lost red spear. Lost a lot of Lokir's army as well. But this is good. We get rid of his main army. It's kind of lucky that uh, we caught them. But yeah, just a little bit annoying. The I hate fighting Skaven. and they're just have so many grimy little tactics and whatnot. But yeah, I I don't know why we weren't able to target that one tower. It just kind of forced my hand a little bit. But I, I guess I could have went about things a little bit better. But, I don't know. I do struggle a little bit on the sieges when I don't have the advantage of range with the uh, the archers. I typically like to play a lot of uh, high adult actions with the archers. Okay, so she did survive. Hallelujah. So, yeah, not too bad. I mean, Lokir went down, so that kind of sucks. But we'll maybe next episode go through the go through the turns quick so that we get him back and uh, make sure Drizzt is in the uh, in the campaign uh, let's give that to Zachnafine the blood ban banner that uh, seems an appropriate banner for him seeing as he's the weapon master 
All right, well, um, this is a uh, pretty, pretty paltry uh, loot here. I was expecting quite a bit more than this. Though that's a fair bit of um, volunteer workers, we'll call them. And decent replenishment, but just the uh, the coin, not so good. But yeah, the plan is to most likely sell this territory. So we've got comrades that we can put in. And did uh, did we lose Lorder? Did Lorder? Oh no no. So, Comrade or Lorder? Comrade's already level 4, so we'll go with Comrade. Lorder's just level 1. Alright, yeah, we'll go with Comrade. I don't know, what's his, uh, his loyalty? He's 8. And we might keep Comrade in the field. Oh, okay, I see. I'm like, why is our cost up so high all of a sudden? It's because uh, Lokir gets that discount on these bad boys. But maybe we'll transfer them into Jarlaxle's fleet for the moment. And maybe we'll transfer Zach Nafin's army into Comrades and operate that way for the time being. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Just the thing is, hmm, this is going to be tricky. We put ourselves right in the middle of the war or of their territory. We'll we'll figure it out. I'll take a take a look at the map and figure out where we're going to head. If we should head, that's actually just quick before we end it here. It's a little bit of a longer episode, but I just want to take a look at the uh, Skaven corruption. Where is it? Skaven Corruption. Yeah, so it looks like they're in the south there as well. Um, I would head down this way so that we don't have them at our back. But I'd rather come up here to the Jade Mountain so that um, to protect our borders. Plus, we want to get to territory that's close to these guys so we can start selling territory to them. So I think that's what we'll work towards. Um... Yeah, and then we might actually have to hire a second general so that we can... It's going to be really expensive, but we do have a little bit of coin in the bank now. So what I might do is hire the... It would be good to have the two generals. I was hoping that there'd be more coastal territories that we could hit, but with the exception of Jingpao, there are not. So, anyway... Uh, but it would be better to operate with two armies, especially against the Skaven. That way we can hopefully protect ourselves a little bit better. Anyway, campaign. Uh, we got some some work to do. We got dangerous enemy to fight. Snicket, but uh, at least we took him down. We got the jump on them, and now it's just a matter of uh, getting some... Oh, I didn't even notice that it's got that uh, thing on there. Yeah, just a matter of keeping the momentum going. So, uh, thank you for watching, guys. Episode 7 is next. Have a great day. Ragnarok out.